All right. Hello, everybody. All of you. I guess I should start doing a thing where you put out... Uh, I saw a woman who was doing some Twitch streaming earlier, and she was doing a thing where there's like a video countdown starting thing. I should really make one of those. So like it can be like starting an end number of minutes. That makes a lot of sense. I've seen some other people do that, but it hadn't occurred to me until I saw her do it. So I'll have to add that into the mix. Um, let's add that to the list, I guess. Um, yeah, I need to see about setting up. I'm getting close to uh, let me type this because I can't think and type at the same time. Add Twitch countdown card to OBS for streams. Whatever. Uh, I think I'm getting close. I may play with Django today and actually start putting some stuff in there. Uh, I think I've got enough. It's not that complicated to do just the basic stuff that I'm looking to do. I just didn't have the confidence yet in doing it, especially after going through that initial Django tutorial that just didn't click, but I'm going through Django for beginners right now. Um, it's pretty solid. Actually, I should have done a chapter of that before I did this. I'm probably going to stream twice today, so I will do that in between streams. Um, anyways, first thing uh, I'm going to mess with is I've got some keyboard maestro setups that I do to... Oh, actually, you know what I didn't do? Hang on one second. Boop. I just need to make sure... I didn't actually get all the way through my checklist for all my stuff. So that's cool. That can go away. So I've got I've got a keyboard maestro app. Or I've got the keyboard maestro app. And as part of that, what I've got is some automation that helps me set up for the streams. Um, Cause it takes a little while for me to get everything set up in the right places and all that jazz. Um, and so actually give me one second. I need to make one more note on that. STL goes there. You guys can't see this. Sorry about that. I'll be right back. So need to make sure GitHub. Oh, I definitely put that in the wrong place. Uh, make sure GitHub desktop isn't on work stuff. That's that's my biggest trick with this is I try to make sure like I'm not sure I'm not flashing any work stuff. Um, it wouldn't be a huge deal, really, but it's just kind of the principle of the thing. So let me burn through this real quick. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I didn't I didn't complete my checklist basically today is what happened. Um, that needs to go away. Okay, cool. Uh, still blurred, right? Okay, yeah, just in case. Uh, that's all cool. That's a cool. Sorry about this. Was not. Didn't. <laughs> I started taking notes about my prep list and didn't finish the prep list. Wah, wah. All right, cool. There we go. That's good. Um, that looks good. So I've got Keyboard Maestro. And I've got these scripts set up that go through and help me get everything lined up for stream preparation. So, and this has evolved over time. Um, the, the biggest thing that it does is uh, it runs this one, which helps move all my windows into the stream area that I've got set up. Um, actually worked great. And where'd it go? Here it is. Um, but one of the things that, that is tricky with that is the Sublime Text ones. So, because Sublime Text can have multiple windows, right? And it's no big deal. So the way that I've got it set up is you activate Sublime Text and then it goes through all of the windows and um, it loops through all the windows and then moves them collectively. But sometimes I got a bunch of windows open. And so for example, let's go Sublime Text. That. Why am I making new windows? Is that making new windows? No. Hello. Was I doing the wrong thing? That was weird. So whatever. Here's a few Sublime Text windows. And if I go to Keyboard Maestro, 
I'm just going to select those two to test. And when I run it, no, when I try it down here, I can see how you can see this stuff easily. So when I click this try button, all four of them zipped into the area that I'm looking for. Trick is what I really want to do is be able to go look at the stuff that's in them and figure out what I want to close and what I want to have open. Cause I like having as much of a clean slate as possible um, for starting the streams so that when I'm going through it, I don't have like three other projects that are sitting there unrelated to the stream open. Cause then I have to go like, oh, let me close this and save this and get them all prepped. So what I want to do is go through in Keyboard Maestro and split and move the windows out, right? And I'm not sure Keyboard Maestro is really the best place to do this. Um, so I've got, I've been doing some stuff with uh, my little Launchpad website, which is this one, that has some triggers and some commands on it. So like right here, I can launch a journal draft. So if I can click that, it makes a new draft for my Hugo website opens the file for me and then takes me to that page, um, which I should kill, but whatever. Get rid of all those. Um, but I'm still, so I'm using Keyboard Meister. I've got all these ways to do automation and I'm trying to figure out where I want to put what stuff. Eventually, most of these commands will be run off of my Django website, my local, it's just a local host Django website. But sometimes I'm just going to fire into Keyboard Maestro. Like I've actually got um, a setting right now, the stream prep one. I can actually go through and there's a link on a website that's not turned on right now that I can click and it goes through and it fires all that stuff off. Um, so instead of having to go into Keyboard Maestro, I hit the thing and it goes. Keyboard Maestro also runs scripts. So like I could run the scripts directly and like I could do all this stuff in scripts directly. So there's this weird kind of tension because some of the things are not as easy to do in Keyboard Maestro because I don't know them as if it would be if I was doing it in a script, right? So, but I think we can figure it out. It's a long way to say, we're gonna try it in Keyboard Maestro. Um, so I'm gonna make a new macro here. We're gonna call it test spread out windows. Things are sluggish right now. Sometimes keyboard mic sure is that thing is sluggish. Um, okay. So what I want to try and do, I'm going to activate sublime text two because two wins today for some reason. Um, oh, there's a stream notes. Uh, okay. Let's mess with three because I don't have anything open in it. Sublime text three. Um, So what if I try that? That'll just start a keyboard or a Sublime Text 3 instance, I think. Oh yeah, so it started it. You can't see the menu, but it started it, but it didn't actually make any windows, but that's cool. So now what I want to try and do is figure out how to loop through the windows, which I, I've got code that does that, which is for each, I think this is it. Yeah, for each window. So this this little action right here, for each item and collection actions, whatever. For each window index in window count. So window count gives you the number of windows in whatever the front application is. This doesn't, I, I don't think you can kind of sit there and say, give me the window count of Safari. Can you? Just look that up. Uh, window, uh, window, count, specific app. It's funny, like half the time when I'm doing this, I when I'm talking out loud on stream, I realize that I'm making an assumption about something that if I wasn't talking out loud, I wouldn't, I would have just run the assumption without doing it, um, or without checking it. Uh, let's open a couple of these. Uh, there's some Apple script. Let's try some. Let's try. 
it uses only finder terminology. Finder, set physical process to finder, try and keyboard meister. Yeah, so keyboard meister can call Apple script, um, which I've done with some other stuff. I've got, uh, I don't remember which ones do. So that's how you activate Safari, which we've already got. Excuse me. My nose is itchy. Choose the method of finding the app. Activate the app by variable. This, none of this is helpful. None of this is helpful. Here's the window function. Returns the dark coordinates to the specific window. Okay, have one or two parameters, usage, window coordinate. With two parameters, the first parameter specifies the window in the front app. Yeah, in the front application. So it, it really does just do the front app is what it looks like. Uh, here's window count. Number of windows in the front application. Yeah, so it doesn't, you have to move the window to the front. Oh, front window name, window name, window size. See all tokens. Wait, what's that other one? C, screen visible, screen count. <laughs> Moose X, Mouse X. Those the tokens. Yes, yeah, so Keyboard Meister does so much stuff. Like, I, I swear, the, the way that I think about it is like Photoshop. When you first look at Photoshop, you only see like a couple of toolbars and it doesn't look like it does that much, but good lord. Um, Keyboard Maestro, same. All right, so it doesn't look like you can get to a specific application, but that's fine. So the way that you, the way that I'm doing this is I activate the application that I want or you know, activate it, and then I run through the windows. So we're gonna just copy that and paste that over here. And this is my resize. So like this is the for loop. And then in here, this area is the action that gets executed every time through the for loop. And the for loop is sets a variable called window index from one to the number of windows that are open, counting upwards. Um, oh, you could do it counting downwards too, right? You could flip those, put window index up there and count down. I think I did that for closing Safari tabs. Um, Cause I've got, a, I've got a button that closes all open Safari tabs, which there's actually a command in the window that does it too, but I built one because why not? Um, all right, so we do so here's the trick is we want to move and resize but we need to move and resize dynamically and i don't know how to do that in keyboard maestro um to start with let's just run this to start getting my head around it right so oops here we need actual windows that was making tabs so there's a few windows that i can't grab right now because mouse uh, oh so the other command that I've got right now is if I do control option command tilde it brings up this window that shows me the coordinates of a window so I can use that to basically tell me where's the target window um, that doesn't really help me right now how would we do this so, um, and I'm sure there's a way to do this in Apple Script or in whatever that are more programmatic, but I'm, I'm interested to see if I can do this type of programming. Um, like, which is programming, it's just you got to figure out where the components are and how to, how to use them. So, how would I do that in code in general? So you'd want to have, so you could do the size of the screen, right? Um, if you divide now, because if you divide it by one and then divide it by two, that's not going to work. So you could multiply. By the number and so th this is the other trick, right? You got to figure out how many to deal with. 
because in my vision, what I'm thinking of is you'd have like, I don't know, maybe six across, or three across, two down, so a, a grid of six. Well, so the, the super simple way to do this, right, would be say if number equals one, Oh, you could do what's the mod mod module module mod whatever. Oh, but if no, so if you divide by two, it would still. I was thinking you could divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, but if you divide by two, you'd still get four and six having zero uh, remainders. Mod mod module whatever. Um. Oh, but if you divide by six, hang on, right? So, interesting, this is an interesting exercise. Is that up there? Yeah, okay. That's right, one divided by six, right? How do you, one divided by six? Point oh six. no, how do you get, What would be a way, how do we get the indexes and go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm sure I've run into this before, but I can't think of it to save my life. Uh, I feel like it's that division thing, right? It's my scratch pad. So for in in range of one to twelve, uh, sure thirteen, why not? Print in right. So we're just gonna run it first to see what happens. There we go. Oh, it actually doesn't all the way make it to. It gives you the one, but not the thirteen. Interesting. So if you get the remainder from six, what does that give us? It gives us the wrong button is what it gives us. One, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that is what I was looking for. Yeah, okay, that's it. Uh, 24, whatever, run 24. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six is zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, what is that called? Mod, mod, module, module, mod, programming, module. That's cool. Very graphical. Forward division, truncated division, positive divisor, negative divisor. Divisor, divisor, you say. Uh, okay, yeah, that's. I'm good with this. Um, okay, so then in Keyboard Maestro, I mean, I guess really what I'm looking for is a case statement. Um, so like the way that I might do this in Python, right, is whoops, uh, is to make a, a dictionary of sizes. Or actually, sorry, you'd make an index. I'd just make a just make a list, right? And then in there's a dictionary of whatever. X one hundred. Y 100 and then two, three, right? We just go through that. And then you just call the index. So is there an equivalent in Keyboard Maestro 
of array. Local variable of password, password variables, interesting. Instance variables, local variables, setting variables. Using variables and text fields, rail array, okay. Well, technically all variables are just strings. You can use a variable as if they were an array by setting the variable to a delimited list of texts and using the following combination. Variable name is any valid keyboard master variable with a delimited set of values by default comma. But see, I need a nested thing. And so we're not gonna do that. <laughs> we're just gonna do it this way. So execute the following actions. So now we just need if statements. Uh, where's our if statements? If then else. So all the following are true. If variable Window index. And by the way, I figure out that all these globals are like super global. Is, whoops. Is one. Resize the window. Whoops, come here. Otherwise, we're not going to do anything. 300. 400, 500, 400. All right, so now let's test this and see where we're going. So we've got one. Two, uh, two, three, four, five, six. I actually don't know where this is gonna go. All right, so we got six sublime text windows. So one of those should move. If we hit this, let me get it where we can actually see all of our stuff. So there are windows. You see, try. Oh, I'm in the way. Eh, whoops. All right, so there's. So activate Sublime Text 3. And I'm just going to run this whole thing and see what happens. I think that window definitely moved. We're gonna try it again. We're gonna put this at 800. And now we're gonna run it. That window definitely moved. It's throwing me off a little bit when the Keyboard Maestro jumps. All right, I'm gonna move Keyboard Maestro to the other window and then click it so we can watch and see if the one actually goes, or if one of them actually goes. Yep, okay, cool. Sweet, okay, so now it's just a matter, like I'm just gonna, I mean, you gotta put in the numbers anyways. Well, so you could, like if you're really gonna do this programmatically, I would programmatically look at the size of the window, make divisions, set variables based off the divisions of the two by three grid and whatever. That's probably more complicated than I wanna get into in Keebler Maestro, I'll bet you could do it. Um, cause you can, I think you can pass variables pretty much anywhere. Assuming that's the case, you could do it, right? I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hard code these and then we'll go from there. So first thing to do is figure out how big this one is. Turn 
1920, 1920 divided by 3 is 640. Uh, it's about 600. Okay, so... Over, we're going to start at 0. Down, we're going to start at 23. Width is going to be 600. Down, also 600. Actually, how tall is this window? We should, that would have been a smart thing to do. It's 1057. Okay. So 1057 plus 23. Uh, well, it's 1080. Yeah, it's a 1080 thing. Got it. Yeah, 1920 by 1080. That would be the resolution of a 1080p monitor. Um, but of course we've got the, the so the, I know now the, tw the menu bar in max is 23 pixels. You can't see it cause I've got the screen zoomed in so you can see the fonts. Um, did I lose the window? I totally lost the window. So 1050, 525, right? I mean, whatever, it's close enough for jazz. So if we run this, it definitely threw a window up there, except it definitely mushed it. What did I do? Down 60, oh, 600, how about that? Yeah, okay. So that's index one. And then what we do, we're just gonna duplicate this two, three, four, five, six times. Two. Goes to 601, still 23 down, still 600 wide. Right, so let's see if this runs. Didn't run. Oh, because you've got to do, you got to run the window count up here. Try. Oh, it didn't activate. Okay, right, right, hang on. We actually have to run the full thing because it's got to jump in and activate. Sometimes you can try these things, and there may be a way to try that specific part, which I'll bet I can. Whatever, I'm just going to run it and see what happens. There we go. Second window is in place. Doesn't look like that's going to cross the screen. Oh, 640, that's why. Four, okay. Also, this song gets to go away. So this goes to 640. This is 641. Six and six is 1280. 1280? Is that right? Feels right. Maybe. This goes to 1281. Which I guess it would really just be 1280, right? Yeah, there's, there'd be the overlapping pixels. Which is the name of my new punk band. All right, so let's see what happens here. Mm, missed one. Also, that one went too far. I've goofed. Move to 1280. What did I do? Oh. This is also 640. This would be where it'd be nice to have a program to do this for me. Okay, that should be the front three. Except I missed the first one still. It's going to 0640. Wait. And that's at 640. And that's at 640. 
Run, please. I don't understand what's happening. Oh, wait, wait. When you move, uh, hang on, you do need, I think you do need to reverse this. From window count to one counting down. Because I think when you move a window, it repositions it in the index. It, it doesn't like maintain a state when you, it doesn't like snapshot the state and say like, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Or it starts that way, but like as soon as you move this one or this one, that becomes one again. And so they keep, I think they fight. I don't think that's all that's going on, but that's part of it. Maybe, I don't know. Actually, now I'm confused. Oh, I didn't change this to three. There we go. That's probably more what's happening. Why is this gap still here? What am I missing? Zero to 640. Start at 640. Oh, 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 oh. I understand. These down here are overriding it. Let's turn those off until we're ready to use them. What do you say? I don't know if you can see that, but I just clicked this to turn them off. I should put this in the middle where you can see it. It's all purpose. There we go. Next one. Not zero index, so this is four. We're gonna go to zero, 23. No, we're going to go to 525 down, 550 down, because we're adding onto that. I don't know if that's quite enough. And that's going to be 640 and 525, whatever. Try it, see what happens. That's pretty good. I should write this up as a blog post. Um, five, which is really a duplicate of two. So we're gonna go to 640 and 640 with the down start of 550. I think that was what we did for this one, right? 525. Test that one. Zoop. There we go. A little bit of white space on there, but that's okay. A little bit of white space at the bottom. That's also okay. Whoops. Lost my headphone. Yeah, I mean, there's the programmer. Part of me is like, there's a lot of duplication going on here and there'd be a array and a grid and like all this other stuff, but it's just like, that's not the vibe of this app really. So index is zero because we've unmod duoed ourselves. This was 1280, that's gonna be 550. That's gonna be 640, that's still gonna be 525. You know what, we're gonna do that to five. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. I can do the math later. So run. Need one more window. Run. Uh oh. Wait, why isn't it? Why not working? Oh, I'm doing the window egg. I'm not doing the module. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, 
Whoops. Oh, crap. Okay, well, that's that's what we need. So now what we need, how do you do modulo or whatever? Modulo. Figured out, I simply put the, so the action block would look like this, set variable Z to calculation modulo, whatever. Whoa, see, yikes. All right, let's see if we can just put this in. Where'd that go? Set variable Z to calculation that. Calculation. No way this works. Window index divided by six. Nope. Where do you do the variable? So one, let's do those. Let's just try that. I don't think it's gonna work, whoops. This is this is all syntax, right? I don't know what the syntax for this stuff is. And that ain't it. Keyboard Maestro error log. is history. Variables, excluded, clipboards, observer, palettes, general. I don't have that. When the variable does not match, is after blah, 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 does not exist. Oh, when the variable. Yeah, that's right. So, is, I want to get it to equal that. Okay, so. I might need to set another variable up here. Set variable to text. What is use variable? Use variable. Oh, interesting. To do stuff. Gotcha. I don't need you. Set variable name. Window index mod to calculation. So I don't want it as text though. I want it to be. Oh.
append variable get file prompt set clipboard json variable to calculation that's what we're looking for Window index mod. Red makes me think it doesn't like that in there. How do you do? One mod six. So it's showing us values down here. We just need to figure out how to get the window index in there. Oh, maybe that is it. It's going straight in. It's giving us the one. That actually works. What does this do? Nope. If window index. Oh, of course that doesn't work. It's text, so I need that to be a calculation. Okay, so what you'd have to do If window and uh, wait, 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 that should have worked. Set variable. To window index. Oh, so if it hits zero, it should be a zero. So that should land a zero right here. And that should be. Oh. Wait, window index. Oh, wait, hang on. I think I got it. 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 Window index mod is zero. Try that. There we go. So window X mod is five. Yeah, okay, so let's just try all these and see what happens. Four, three, two, one. Mush all these in the middle. 
All right, let's give it a shot and see what happens. I'm gonna throw it off screen so we can see it. So, also, do we have enough? I wanna make sure we can see some that go several deep, right? So, we, yeah, we got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. Um, okay. Run. Zip. And some of these should be a couple deep, right? So we close that. Yep, there's no one behind it. That is cool. That is cool. Uh, I, Hugo New, Hugo New. Sorry, I need to make a new Hugo page. Um. Spreading windows out with keyboard. Wait, am I supposed to use, I think I use dashes here. Wait, do you use underscores? No, use dashes. start with that there's the page um and then whatever it's funny i spend i'm doing so much streaming stuff that i'm not actually doing blog posts but i like find good stuff maybe i should write post on stream um cool okay um yeah, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and add that into the mix right now. So, activate Sublime Text. So, what I want is... For this to hide. So, I'm going to move this into my window setups. And we're going to call this, so I don't need to do an app, because I'm just going to loop through, like this will be kind of a module, right? Um, spread windows across spread app windows across 920 by 1080. Yeah, I keep thinking like, I wonder how you would do Like there's almost certainly a way there's certainly a way to like do this more programmatically. Um, you could do, I mean, you could set up some type of an array or whatever. But I think that's getting like you can do like you can basically like, I think people Meister here is trying complete, especially because you can run command line stuff or whatever. But um, I've got no I've got no problem with this duplication right here. Um, and this is really slick. It shows you what the value is. That's really cool. It's got a lot of great touches to it. Uh, yeah, so spread app windows across that. And so then in our streaming macros, stream prep, move apps, clone, execute, resize windows to go. Yeah, really what I want to do here is So I want a new macro here. It's like it's kind of weird cuz it's like modules and modules and modules. I don't want to go more than 3 though cuz I'm going to start losing the thread. Um
Setup. App. Windows. To review. So I also set the sizes of the fonts automatically. Um, I'll have to figure out how that ties into this, but I'm gonna do that later. Um, so resize windows for full stream is this one. I wanna take Sublime Text and Sublime Text 2 out of there. Here, we'll cut one of those and then delete the other ones. Yeah, and again, so like this this loop every time is the same. And I actually had a way that it was doing it whitelisting and going through each application and setting them, but it seemed slower than doing it this way. I need I should actually test it. Um because like if I change the file size or whatever, like all these numbers are hard coded across all of these things. Um Oh well, I guess I could call the smarter thing would just be to split that out to its own action, its own thing, like its own function. That would make sense. Uh, so set up stream things to review. Whoa, don't do that. Stop. <laughs> I want you to go away. I guess it pops up automatically. There's nothing in there. Um, duplicate that. So we're going to do Sublime Dex 2, and we're going to do Sublime Dex 3. And then from our window... Oh, whoops, hang on. See, this is where I'm starting to lose the thread a little bit. Setup app. Here. Support. Stream support. Setup app windows to review. So we're going to do two and three. And then here we want to add a new action, which is going to run a macro. Maybe. To like execute a macro. And that macro is going to be under window setups spread for those. Copy, paste, push there. Mm, uh, uh, this is too, too much, too much, too much, too much. Get rid of this. Stream prep. I can't do the three the three levels. I was too much. I can do two. That's fine. Uh, launch apps. It should be live. Those are cool. Move apps. Here we can just do it. Ah, this is what we should do. We're gonna make a group. There we go. Rename. Uh, set up app windows for review. Yeah, I kind of do the same thing with finder windows, like on this one. Um, and to executing shell syrup. So I open specific finder windows uh, that I want to see and review and just make sure they're cool, which we can try this right now. I'll just go whoop. Maybe. And that way I can just look, I can put eyes on these and make sure everything's cool and I'm not like, I won't empty the trash and like, you know, what else on the desktop, etc. cetera. So, um, that's cool though. That's, I've been closing it. I, I want to review all the stuff that's up there, right? So that that's a good way to do that. Um, so whatever, that took some time, but like that's, that, this little script, which I've, I spent some time on, but it like, does most of my stream prep like stream prep used to take 15 minutes just to like go review everything make sure everything's cool and all set up and whatever and now it's like five so like the hour that i just spent on that will be done in six days also quality of life is way better so cool. uh all right
Eh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. To 55, 30. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to do show notes or how I'm going to do show notes. Uh, DB vs. Connections via script. The Beaver config file. Eleven, eleven, eleven. Okay. Does that take me back to the same place? It did. Okay. <laughs> it's a spam like it's spam, that's what that is. Admin manage connections. DB recruits information about your project files, connections, names, password. Sort of an encrypted file, DB for credentials.json. Those are two. Wait. Oh, DB for drivers. I gotcha. DB for four. No such directory. DB for DB for four. Come on, I hit four. Let's do it. There we go. General. Scripts. This doesn't look like the right thing. No. Okay. What version of DB am I running? I am running seven two four. Right. Hey, what's up, man? Ooh, sweet, very sweet. Becoming a uh, iOS hacker? No, I was. I don't know. I'm lost. I was gonna come up with something funny, and then it just went right out of my brain. That's very sweet. Very sweet. The uh, you got a plan for a thing, or are you just like messing around a little bit? What's your uh, what's your go to here? Womp womp. <laughs> yeah. Womp womp has been happening to me a lot recently. Uh, I, this past week was, it was a fine week or whatever, but I'm just, I was done with it. And so it was like, okay, we're cool. Uh, let's actually see if we can find this. I want to see where this. This Mac. Here, hang on. I don't know what all that's going to show. The answer is nothing. It's going to show nothing because that file does not exist. Yeah, there's no, I don't know where that file's stored. I don't care anymore. Nice. Yeah, like I tell you, like doing the stuff for me, like I get so much satisfaction out of that, especially because I don't have to do like 
I know the edge cases. I know where it can go. If, I, if I'm really worried about an edge case, I can fix it or I can not. There's not like that whole like building a big old thing and whatever. Like I like the idea of that a little bit, but like most of the stuff that I do when I'm messing around and learning, I like being able to just be like, okay, these are the parameters. I don't need to try and please everybody. It's just like, here's the parameters, please myself and then be good at it. At Mac apps are more complicated, right on. Um, yeah, because it's just like, it's a million libraries, right? Is is a big part of it and figuring out how to address the libraries and get all the stuff. So it's, my understanding is like, there's a syntax and there's learning language and then there's learning the libraries and all of those are like non-trivial, right? This page lies. By default, all projects run in workspaces. Default project first, work faces, work space, this is six general. Okay, wait, so maybe it does exist. Gotcha. Yeah, I, uh, so I've got a couple little tools that I've written. I've got like a little photo import script that part of me wants to kick over and do as a, right, it's a Perl script that I wrote years ago, um, which I try not to look at because it's a Perl script that I wrote years ago. And I always have this idea of like, ooh, I'd like to turn that into a little Mac app or whatever. The funny thing, of course, is I've got a Windows machine now too, and I'm putting some stuff on there. So really what I need is a cross-platform thing. So Perl would work, or I'm gonna probably rewrite it in Python. But um, right now I'm just doing it on the Mac and then copying stuff over, because that's the easiest way to do it. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I looked at Objective-C years ago uh, and went through the first part of one of the Objective-C books, but then just fell off it. It just wasn't the right time for me to do that stuff. On principle, though, I would like to make a Mac app or an iOS app. I don't know what it would do or what it would be, but I would like to make one. Uh, and at some point... I will. I'll look at yours first and then you can tell me all the like lessons learned about like, don't do this, don't do this, do this. And then I will do that. Uh, all right, here, one more time into the deep here. Um, library DB for data, workspace is six. There looks like it, that, okay, so their documentation's off. Nope, their documentation's not off. Oh, is there maybe, is it in applications? Where's the beaver? DB works right there. Oh, you, it's not a directory. Never mind. DB schema. I don't know what that is. That's cool. Beat me. Universal database tool for designing and creating databases. Using DB schema, you can reverse engineer the database schema from the database and build multiple diagrams out of it. Oh, that's cool. I know I had this from 2016, apparently. So it's the objective C without the C. Gotcha. So it's objective. That was awful. Um, yeah, I've heard, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the um, Accidental Tech podcast. Um, those guys ta have talked about Swift some a little bit and talked about the language. Um, and it sounds, it sounds nice. I've never really even looked at Swift as a language. Swift. Oh, I did the Swift Playgrounds. I forgot about that. Uh, great first language. Yeah, apparently, like the um, 
the language changed a bunch. Like they they were okay with doing breaking changes when they were first making it, if I remember right. Um, and like everybody was kind of cool with that because they said up front, like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna put it out there, and then we're gonna think about what we did, and we might break everything to to make it move because we want to make it progress, right?" Um, and so, but they were trying to burn the cycle quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was open source too, right? Yeah. I think I saw that. An accident of history. Yeah. That was. Was that the next stuff? I don't totally remember it. I I I read the I read the in that book they talked a little bit about the history of Objective C, but I don't I that's out of my brain. <laughs> right. Yeah, you buy a book and you turn around and, well, in the days when you used to go to a bookstore and you buy a book and then you turn around and take it home, it's already out of date. Uh, I don't remember the last time I was in a bookstore. I was just thinking about Walden Books was a cool bookstore that we had back in the day. It was still a chain, but it was like nice because it, it was in the mall, but it was like way tighter than Books a Million in those places. Which are like have you know all this big space, and it was just kind of a neat feeling to like be like not claustrophobic by books, but definitely like surrounded by books. All right, we don't need that one. File test move. Okay, let's get out of scratch pad here for a minute because the one that I do want to finish up here. Oh, where did it go? Uh, oh, did I close it? Oh, no, I did it in Visual Studio Code. That's right. Big Nerd Ranch. That was actually it. I like the approach that they did with the Objective-C stuff. Um, and, like, it held, like it, the way that they were doing it kind of fit with my brain. And part of it was, like, we're not going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. We're just going to do some stuff and we'll talk about it a little bit as we work through it, but just parts of it. And you're not going to understand some parts of it. That's OK. Just like we're going to just follow along. And I thought that was a really good thing because like I'm going through all these other Django tutorials right now and like they keep doing all this stuff where it's like do this and this and this and this and this and then run and it's over here. And it's like I get an error. Which one of these 12 things caused that error? Like. I've got some experience, right? So I can go figure it out. But like for new people, it's like, uh-uh. Oh yeah, borders. So we've got a uh, we've we've got one close that's still pretty that's still one of the bigger ones, basically. Uh, is it borders or Barnes and Noble? I can't remember. Those two things have moved back in my. I know it's Barnes and Noble. It's not borders. Um, yeah, the borders around here closed. Maybe they all closed. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really liked any bookstore basically. Um, I kind of like some of the smaller ones too. Again, that feeling of like, I don't know, the closeness of books. Uh, all right, let me see what we got here. Um, so this is our little test runner. Let me rerun this from what we did. So I think this still runs, right? Good. So I'm making a just a little bash script to I often run into a trick where I've got uh, a bunch of files that have come down like music files where the names, you know, have weird characters, have parentheses, have single quotes, have dashes in or uppercase or whatever. And so what I want to do is I'm making a a little script to go through and mush mush them all down into snake case. Um, and so I've got the basics of it. I had the basics of it working and now, but now I'm actually trying to like apply a Python test suite to it or I'm putting a Py, I'm putting a test suite on it and I'm using Python to do the test suite because I don't really know about bash testing or test suites. Uh, I should probably look at that more, but Python's the way I'm going right now. So I've got it basically working. Or I've got the, the first part of it working. And so here now I'm going through the test cases of like, here's 
all the things that should happen. So make sure you remove leading spaces. We don't want to have just things sitting up front or whatever. Um, this one might be tricky. So a space after the name before the dot. All right, we're gonna have to figure out some regular expressions here. Hmm, that's pretty good. Knowledge surrounds you with all that you don't know. I like that. Very eloquent. I dig that a lot. And there's a lot that I don't know. What's that old thing about like the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know? Um, at least if you're paying attention. That was weird. Sound like something binged. I don't think it was my doorbell. Maybe it was. Nobody comes by my house, which is my preferred way. All right, let's fire it up and see what happens. Failed. What did it leave us with? Test case. So it gave us this, test file three. Oh no, it just didn't, wait, what did it do? Space after name. Underscore text, yeah, so it's got a space in, oh, I should probably bump the font up here, shouldn't I? Eh, 19. Where'd it go? That changed? Yes, it changed it. It certainly did. Oh, so giant. That's too big. I can't deal with that. 18. A little smaller. Uh, also, give me a second. There was a th cool theme. I think I'm gonna play with a different theme. Uh, preferences. File icon theme. That's cool. Color theme. Oh, I don't remember what it was. PowerShell IC? Nope. I'm gonna do this for like 30 seconds. And if I don't find the one I'm thinking, of, oh, of course I just lost the one. Okay, there's that. There's one that looked like Tron. And I kind of want to play with Tron right now. KT, there we go. Markdown editor, no, KT. KAT, that's high contrast, my ass. This. Is that? No, that's not it. Adam One Dark. Nope. Nope. Tomorrow Night Blue. Nope. Nope. Hello! Toast for life. Nice. You re rediscovering object oriented? Nice. No. You can preview before? Well, look at that. That's smart. I saw it late last night, so I might have been hallucinating, but. Mmm, that's close. I'm 
about to not worry about it anymore. That's it. High contrast. That's just fun. I kind of want to play around with theme stuff too at some point. I need to... Uh, I want to shrink that window size. I can't, can I? Oh well. Um, <laughs> it just feels like Tron to me. I love it. Uh, all right. Failed. It didn't make it. Okay, so now we got to figure out the regular expression. Um, by the way, how's it going, Toast? Doing all right? I'm trying to figure out how to do a regular expression. Oh, the other thing I should do, actually, before I do that, I want to split this. So that I'm not trying. So originally I was trying to do this all on one line because I was thinking like, oh, it's a bash command and you just do it. But like, I'm running a script. So, and the other trick is like, I was thinking about it the other night too. I was like, why don't I just do this in Python? But it's an interesting exercise to go through on bash. Um, so that's where I'm headed. Nice. Yeah, the um uh Tron terminal. No, oh, SSH Tron, Tron in your terminal? No way. <laughs> People are awesome. Uh, no, that's not it. Yeah, that's from Tron Legacy, right? Yeah. Eh, whatever. I like it. It's also, like, something about, like, the... the kick of the blue lines. I really like this, actually. I want to play. I want to play with the font colors a little bit, but by and large, I like it. Also, I want just a little more space in this gutter right here. I don't like it right up on it. That may be something I can't do anything about. Anyways, um, so destination file. So you can just keep. So, so this is nice because I got a test suite on this, right? So if I run this, ran one test, everything's cool. Sweet. So just to try this. That's still gonna pass because I'm just overwriting it. Whoops. If I run the wrong thing, I'm not. There you go. Right. And then so the question is, can you just do this? I don't know how this works in Bash, but can you call? So we want to execute again. And we're gonna echo destination file to the next set, which is going to be all of these. All right, so we're still going to run because we're overwriting. So that should pass. The question is, does this work? It does. OK, yeah, I just want to move these down a little bit so that I can actually see uh, so I can actually see on the lines what I'm doing and actually drop in the said commands. Um, so we're gonna do this. See if that still runs. Failed. Work something. 
rename test file one to no such directory. Oh, dest file, gotcha. See, this makes me, I, I was messing around with this just on the command line, but there was, I wasn't really testing it because I didn't really have, like I was just testing it by like looking at it, but it, I kept getting like more and more nervous about it the more commands I added and it kept getting harder and harder to test, right? Because it makes sense because you're doing it manually. And I hadn't actually thought through all the test cases yet. So I was like, let's put an actual test frame around, or fra framework around it. And yes, then I thought, why not just do this in Bash, or do this in Python? But a, I want to go through the exercise to see if I can pull it off in Bash. So destination file, we're gonna take that one. Oh wait. Yeah, so let's do it this way. Just make sure we're still, I, I don't wanna to get too far away from green, otherwise I'm gonna get in the weeds. So we can take this one away and we can take these away. Also, there's probably a different way to, to do this reassignment or whatever. Um, all right, let's see if that still works. Does that still work? Green, sweet. So I can drop these. Now we're just gonna duplicate this here. Duplicate this one, rinse, repeat. So we drop all those. And then we drop this first one. So first make sure it compiles. Yup. Next, comment all this stuff out. And run one more time. There we go. Get rid of that. Last one. Take this, do this, do this. Take this out. Take this out. Nope. Take that out. Take that out. Let's just see if it works. Worked. Take that out. I'm gonna come with that out for now. So this, oh, here's all our test stuff. Okay. Um. Yeah, really, this would be so much faster to do in Python, but we're gonna try it. Well, it'll actually make an interesting post, right? We we'll do it in Python and then do it in, or do it in Bash and then do it in Python. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, my vision's still largely there, um, but I just, I like blowing it up. Oh, that actually doesn't, it's not good contrast for the stream, is it? Actually, crap. Um, oops, how do you get out of there? I'll use that for me. Um, some of these are awful. Where's the main one that we had there? Community Visual Studio, Light Visual Studio, Default Light. Oh, that's so bright right now. Okay, that'll work. Again, I want just a little more space right there. I like that font should not be touching. Give me like, it doesn't have to be a full width, but like a little something in the gutter. But yeah, so I, I blow the fonts way up to hopefully make the stream easier to see for people on smaller devices. Um, mouse over features, diff decorators. No, okay. 
workspace? No. Oh well. Fourteen, sixteen, right? Yeah. Fourteen is about where I am most of the time. Um, just that's fine. And you know, it used to be, like I used to. I remember when I was used to do design stuff. I think the font was called Seven Point, which at the time was. Oops, what was this? Which I think at the time was Bible print sizes. Huh. The the smallest font that you could do on like a pixel font was seven points because that's that would that's what gave you the height that you needed to like I don't know, make an F or something that made sense. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Somehow it got to seven. I think seven point was the name of the font. Um, but I used that on some of my websites and it was just like, but that was 20 years ago. Uh, let's see what the CSS type test is. Ooh, yeah. So I can still read two point type right here. Barely. This I can actually read okay. I would not want to have that be the size. Yeah, so in this like, well, so I'm uh, sorry, something else is going on right now, which is I'm blown up 100% or 150%. Here's what that really looks like. Yeah, see, 14 is like a default. I, I'm probably fine with 11 or 12 most of the time, but like I just keep it at 14. And so far these days, I'm so used to doing the stream stuff where I blow everything up 150% so that you can see it. It's just like, I'm so, like, I, I don't know font sizes anymore. They're just all over the place. Oh, you just <laughs> burned your eyes out on the Bible. That's, uh, yeah, I've seen some of the, like, super small text, and, like, it's small, but it's also, like, compact, right? So the lines are really close together, right? Oh, I can't, I can't read too much of that stuff too long. Oh, there's an interesting one. Font size study. Yeah, whatever. Uh, all right, so we got that split out. Each. Uh, manipulation is on its own line. Oh, there we go. That's a better one. You couldn't see the other one really well. I just realized it was super tiny, super dark. I like Annie from Community. She's good people. All right, let's try and figure this one out. So. This may be where I jump to Python because <laughs> like this wouldn't be too bad on Python because you just do a split and then deal with everything um, and f that wasn't the last item and then reassemble, right? And then sort of split command, you split very far. There's a split, okay. Split a file into pieces. See, it's also interesting because I'm learning, like, I just realized this is cool because I can kind of see I'm finding new stuff. This is all about splitting. <laughs> Everything. 
think that's a gift, isn't it? Oh, I'm thinking of uh, everyone from uh, the professional. Everyone. Bash, split, string. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? You could use the internal field separator variable. And then let it parse into an array. When this happens in the command, then the assignment to IFS only takes place to that single command's environment to read. It then parses the input according to IFS variable in the array, which you did right over. What was the question? I have this string stored in a variable. I would like to split the strings, so I have that. I don't necessarily need to add one or add two. If they're elements of an array, that's even better. Males, echoes in, truncate, that or translate that with slash n. Oh, that doesn't help me. Hmm. IFS solution. I tried this and it works. I keep the old IFS and restore it. Blah. Original IFS semicolon males ends for x and males. Oh, 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 okay. Wait a minute. I think I maybe understand what's going on. Okay. So then... If that's the case, uh, let's make a new scratch pad here. So, And a batch script, you can just do this, right? How do you, you just do assignment, right? Some string dot text with a space. Echo string, right? This works. Save, uh, echo, whoops, actually we can do this down here. Right, okay, so that echoes it. Then bash. Okay, got it. Hey, Preston, how's it going? Life treating you all right? Is Saturday treating you all right? It's Saturday, right? All right, so then you split it. I want to split on the 
dot. We'll do it, or do I want to split on the string? No, yeah, I want to split on the dot because I need to be able to. First, I should read what internal field separator is, right? That's it's it starts as space, right? Victor, that's what you're saying. Oh, I got a new gif. Mmm, thinking. Thinking. There's another one in there that has the dude doing that too. Exploits. For any command line return shell, you know, Scott purchases an infra field separator, a review of IFS, often referred to as the IFS. First, a variable which defines the character or characters used to separate a pattern into tokens for some operations. By default, it typically includes. Oh, okay, so it can be multiple things: space, tab, and the new line. Got it. Ah. <laughs> space, space, space. I should have a video of that. Uh. Port, uh, what's the name of the game where you make portals? Portal. It's Saturday. My brain is only like 80% there, maybe 70. So. You can do... I don't know how read works. Add or goes in. I don't understand this line at all. Spay, you got it. You got it. Really? Space. Such a fun game. I don't understand this. Uh, so I get the separator read but i can't so this is silly right man read doesn't show me anything like that's frustrating and the only thing down here is read and read only how do you see those man bash read read man page see why isn't this in my thing Reline from standard input and split into fields. Oh, okay. Read a single line from standard input or from a file descriptor if the U option is supplied. The line is split into fields as the word, as with word splitting, okay. And the first word is assigned to the name, first name. Which I'm assuming is over here. Yes? No? Maybe? Yeah, so IFS gives you the word delimiters. Okay. If no names are supplied, the line where it stores in reply variable. So. They're doing R and A. Hey, R and A. It's like DNA, but with R's. Do not allow backslashes to escape any characters. Okay, I actually don't have to worry about that. Okay, so this reads into the name adder through, and so this, I guess that's how you're firing the input at it. And for I, so that gives it an array. And then this goes, loops through the array, and then you process I. 
Okay, so then... I'm just gonna copy all this. I, I understand. I wanted to under, like, understand a little bit what's happening. I'm in Visual Studio Code. So some string. So... And then what we want to do is... Output string equals nothing. So I just want to see what happens. So does this just explode or does this work? Unexpected token near done. Oh, because it needs to have something in here probably. So output string equals how did we append I forget there's got to be a better way to do the append than that but output string equals output string whatever we'll just do that what does this do did nothing Oh, 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 right. Uh, because we need to add I to it. Nope. That didn't work. What if we just do output string equals I and just start with there? Start super simple. Still no. Oh, I'm not passing. I don't have a pen. Well, well, let's try passing something in. How about that? See what that does. Hey, we got something. Yep. <laughs> Photoshop is an ID. Hey, I have scripted the hell out of Photoshop before. It has a JavaScript interface that's actually pretty, pretty decent. Um, oh, MRA is what vaccine is by Pfizer uses. Interesting. What's MRA? I, I know, well, I don't know what RNA is, but like, I know the term. Mitochondrial RNA. Oh, messenger RNA. Sounds like something that Amazon would have. Single strand RNA molecule complementary one of the DNA strands of a gene. Messenger RNA just sounds cool. Ooh, also looks complicated. Because it's molecular biology. So yes, it's complicated. Yeah, I, so I, I still have, I had a, um, a process running. I know, oh, the darkness. It, I still got a little bit of daylight here. Um, but I'm, of course, an hour behind you. Yeah, but no, I, uh, I've still got a process. So I wrote some JavaScript for uh, processing some images in Photoshop 10 years ago uh, and just found out, I don't know, sometime last year that it's actually still running uh, because they moved server. I don't remember when it was, but a while ago, they, they moved servers and the config file didn't get updated to point to the right server. And they're like, oh, what's happening? I was like, oh, been a while. Um, so I don't really need to know about this, but basically this is looping through an array. So if I just do my basic set here, uh, let's, let's do spaces to So is there, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Um, can't you do, is it squirrely brackets or do you do, 
No, it would still do an echo. How do you output? Oh, no, you do have to echo because you got to pass it through. You got to pass it through. So we do that and we take I. I'm oh, sorry, the echo I. Echo I. Echo I to our said command. Sorry, we echo. So output string needs to equal. Can you put this in quotes? Output string. What's that gonna do? Hey, it worked. It is right there. So cool. Uh, then what you could do? So you could split. There's a couple different ways you could do this. You could split on the dots. I'm trying to figure out if I want to run the full processing command inside this loop or not. I don't think I do. I don't know why, but I want. I feel like these should be modular processes. So, but I've got this basic thing going. And so I think I can apply, I want to apply this at the start. So is test runner still broken? What am I doing? Oh, command run, sorry. Failed, okay. So that's on this one. Okay, so let me back this out. And I wanna put in the basic structure here of the loop without doing any processing. So this is gonna take in one and it goes into adder. And then what we're gonna do is, so output string equals output string, there's nothing actually in there, right? But equals, so you need something to target. Um, strip string, strip name, whatever. Strip name equals nothing. All right, does that still compile and run without exploding? I do, cool. Oh, GIMP, right. I'm amused by converting black and white images into a different color space. I get it, but like, that's just, it's funny. So what'd you do with the treasury? <laughs> right. It's so weird how uh, I don't know, companies didn't I think more companies now most of the time value automation and value people that do stuff like that and come up with ways to fix things. But that definitely wasn't always the case. Yeah, see, this is where, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out, like, the, the testability of this stuff, but, like, this is all cool. So this passes. So 
so if we do said end of line end of life end of life end of line With standard said, you will never see a new line in the text you read file. This is because said reads line by line. And is therefore no new line. Right. Record space could be anchored at the end of the line. Right. Or at the beginning using. Okay, so it is the, the standard things. Cool. Okay, so that. So. Said slash s. Because last time I tried that, it didn't work the way I expected. How much white space? I swear, oh, gotta be in a lowercase dashy. Remark prefix compliance. Use that instead of S. Oh, okay. So what I want to do is that plus one or more gives me strip name, and then here we'll do this. And so does this run? So that still runs. Now if I add this back in, ah, it didn't work. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Part of the reason might be because this is not what it's supposed to be. There should be space after name. Failed. Check space after name. Space after name. Still has it. Crap. star because it's at least passing it down in here because that's how that's how one's getting down in there space after name nice good on you is the treasury like I mean when I assume treasury, I assume government treasury. That's I don't know of any type of other type of treasury, but that's what I would expect. But just confirming that's the case. Oh, wait, 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 hang on! Look at this. What's this right here? Failed. At least it's not crashing. Oh wait, rename test file one, no such directory. Oh, I got a different problem now. All right, backing out. Um let me just make sure this still works and I get it so fried that I can't figure out what's going on. Run. Oh, crap. Oh, space after name. Okay, yeah, yeah hang on. Wait, this has two. Well, actually, hang on. You know what? Because we know that this is. Let's just do this. Strip name. So we're going to read one. We're going to put strip name back in here. I want to see what happens. So that did not pass. 
That did not work. Okay. Noted. Oh, because we need to add adder. Oh, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Okay, let me make sure that passes. No, we need to do I, echo I. So does this pass? That passes. Does this pass? That passes. Now, if we add in our new test case, Does this pass? No, it does not. Crap. Puerto Rico treasury, all right. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, well, I tell you, I've like, I hope to never have to look. Like, I've got a good gig right now, and I hope that I'd never have to look for another job or deal with that stuff again. Like, that's just I. I mean, nobody's a fan of that, right? But um, it's good on you for just like saying and heading out. That's that's solid. I, I legit don't know if I've got that in me. It would it would take a lot. Um, but I, it would take a lot, ah. but I, I appreciate that other folks have like that. Like, I wish I had that more of that, like, yeah, you know what, uh. but whatever. All right. So let's try one other thing space this way. Let's see what that does. I feel like I'm close. How many spaces are there? One, two, three, three. I'm not splitting on the dot. <sighs> I just don't have my, like all this, this stuff still looks like a little bit of gobbledygook to me. So we're taking in the string. Uh, that's the wrong thing. Let's try here. So we're taking, we got, we're creating empty variable. We're taking in what's getting passed into it. We're moving that into this array that we're splitting on dot. Looping through the array, pulling out eyes. Taking I, passing it to said, and hopefully getting rid of space. Let's try putting that back in there. plus at the end of the line that gets appended to this which comes back into that which then goes down here run fail test file one did not load Crap. So this is where I'm going to get wrapped around myself if I'm not careful one two three space I just want to get it to pass once see that's not working either what the hell's going on oh I'll bet you have to put it back in don't you which how do you join on that then <sighs> Because is that what's happening? Yeah, test file one, it's splitting, there's no dot there. Okay, so it's sucking out the dot. How do you do a join? Because I can't just append it to the end. Uh, bash join.
No, oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, baby. I love it. That's sweet. Yeah. I mean, that's... I think that's one of the biggest things, right? If you're... good at it, and you work to be good at it, then that gives you, like, it gives you way more power in the, you know, negotiation or the whatever. Um, that's super, super cool. Yeah, I get, like, again, for me, like, I'm in a good spot at the moment, and hopefully I just never have to actually deal with that. Um, I would like to go until I retire, and hopefully not have to deal with any BS like that. Um, and I've been, I've been super lucky. So like, um, I, uh, I hope that luck continues because that would be nice. 100% birth. What is all this? Local D1 shift, local F1 shift, F print. I can almost make it through that. So how, this is just a, an exercise at this point to see if this is a thing that is the way that I wanna do this. Well, I guess, I'm overthinking this. So let me get back to this. I think I'm overthinking this. Because really, the trick is I don't want underscores next to dots. So all I got to do is look for underscores or spaces next to dots. I don't have to actually split. I don't care which one it is. I'm trying not to do it on the last one. But really, I want to chomp them all. This should be more straightforward. Or I think this is gonna be more straightforward. So that runs. All right, let me add this back in. So in here. Did I just delete one? I feel like I just deleted one. Okay, that's fine. two things here before we do this stop that I want to do this just so I can have this be consistent whoops this be consistent just make sure that still runs let me make sure that still runs by hitting the right keys oh crap oh yeah sorry this isn't there run okay that runs now I can play with this I just like this consistency of having it always be the same little look here um, so let's add our test case in which we know is going to fail oops especially if we run the right thing there we go yep failing and then here, so I'm guessing we want to do space, plus, dot, replace with dot, right? Let's see if regex works here the way I expect it to. Nope, ah, crap. Hey, I can become famous and buy more followers at bigfollowers.com. Let's see how many of these we get in a row. Last time one of these came by, um, I got like 12 of them. It was kind of funny. Oh, dude, you're not going to offend me with language. Um, like, or let me put it this way. 
it would be very impressive if you offended me with language and I would be impressed and not really offended, just impressed. So like, ain't no thing. Yeah, no, I like, I mean, that's, I, I think I'm, I'm impressed with your ability to have that thought and that forthrightness because like that's a tough it's a tough position to take for a lot of people of like you know the authority thing and like not taking bs and like also being able to just tell people to flip off and like all the other stuff like that's that is not a, i have not seen very much of that um i respect the hell out of that um the it, it's very cool and especially if like having the confidence and the, like because you, you know that you can go get another gig right um and that's that's the thing that i think freaks me out the most and probably most people is the whole thing is like ah what's going on all right that didn't go away i thought more were gonna come in whatever bye bye ban ban but yeah i um Having, like for me, it's about the team that I'm on. So it's less about the company. Like I kind of don't care what company somebody works for if they're on a really good team and the company isn't like repugnant, right? So a repugnant, whatever that word is. So like if the company's fine, but you're on a crappy team, that sucks. But if you're on a good team and the company's just a company, right? Because it's all business. Then it's like, it's solid. I like that. And I'm on a really good team. So like, I'm, I've been super lucky with that. You will hear me talk about my luck a lot. I am very lucky. Or I have been very lucky. Hopefully that luck continues. Um, all right. One, two, three. We're trying hard to get this. this I, we're, in, we're targeted in the area. We just got to find the thing. There we go. Okay, so we found it. So that's passing the right thing. And if I do one more space, that should fail. And if I back off and just do two spaces, that so like I'm hard coded for the specific thing that I'm looking for. So put one more space in there. We're green. Okay, so now I just got to figure out how to do that with regex or with whatever it wants for regex. And like I was trying to do that. Let's see if that works. I know slash space works, but that other article was talking about for um Oops, that was not the right place to do that at all. For POSEC stuff or however you say that, that this is a better thing to do. There we go. That was it. Found it. So that didn't like the plus. Hmm. Okay. So it does zero in orbit. Uh, one or more. It's kind of weird. I'm okay with it. Sweet. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, this will be fine because it's going to take them out all over the place. I think this is going to be fine. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Uh, let me go commit this real quick, though. Let me get rid of that scratch pad thing. Where'd it go? Here. Scratch pad. Thank you. Don't need you. Appreciate it. Delete. Oh, I'm going to get rid of that test one file that threw it too because it doesn't match the patterns. Delete. There you go. Um, update for spaces for dots. Oh, I just realized there's another variation of this that I want to test. 
which is going to be that. I'm not going to worry about like spaces at the end because there shouldn't be a space at the end of file name. Like, I mean, I guess I could, but whatever. Um, you're right. Like, it's already weird if you're doing that. So I guess I could crack that. Um, all right. So let's see if this just works. Yep. Okay, now I think this one's going to fail because I, I'm not looking for spaces on the back side of the dots. Failed. But if we move that over there, what happens? Pass. Cool. And now we're getting all the weird characters. <sighs> so let's see what this does. I want to remove the ampersand here. That's what's going on. Fail. Yeah, so it kept the and. So I probably want to remove those first. The trick with that is going to be... Said match non word character. Slash W. Yep. That's not white space. Match the beginning word, match the end of the word. Okay, that's cool. Matches only at the start of the pattern space. This is different from that in multi-line mode. Print the following. Whatever. So we should be able slash capital W. So any non-word character gets an underscore. And then I think the rest of it should take care of itself. It did not. Oh, uh, it was, I could make big followers and make billions of dollars uh, and have the life that I've always dreamed of. <laughs> you talk about the one I deleted? That was, uh, it was just some spam. Some spam. Why didn't that work? The problem is really what I need to do is completely clear the decks on every test here. Okay, so that found it. I don't think this is legit though.
because that should work. It is possible. Let's try giving it the dash E for extended. Nope. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. One of them's here. Oh, 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 that's because I did it and it passed. Right, I got it. Um, add that to the get ignore. There we go. So why didn't that work? What does R do? Still fail. Oh, uh, illegal option. Wait, is that what it was saying the other time to you? Oh, whoa, 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 hang on. Check two or more. Oh, that's doing the dots. Crap. Can you do groupings? Oh, come on, right? Got, yeah, see, it's doing the dot. That's what it is. See ya. Take it easy. Have a good one. Enjoy. Happy Swifting. Crap. Said match group. So far, I have the following replacement, blah, blah, blah. Match the whole line. So the dot add is the area expression. Space or tab. So if we put this in a group, If it's a non-word character, but not a dot. Crap. Oh. I don't know what a good way to do this is. It said match non word character, but not a uh, dot. <sighs> Because I could match. I don't know how you would do that. Hmm. 
I mean, you could feed it the characters that you wanted to do, but like, I'd rather. I don't want to whitelist, or I mean, I guess I have to whitelist or blacklist one way or the, one way or the other. Well, no, I have to target specifically the ones that I want to kill. So, but I want I want all regex all non words except dot. match any non-word characters except dash or hyphen you may use that oh 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 you invert it you may need to negate the character class that matches any of the character following digits or hyphens see the problem is this doesn't have umlauts and stuff in there however this regular expression does not match underscore Or the case in central monitor. Yeah, see this the problem with this is I don't think that works. <laughs> this looks like Ascure. If you want to make the pattern Unicode aware, that is since I probably was regex. If he's a shorthand character. Okay, so those are all some flags. Here, that matches any character that is not a character. Okay, so I think this, this I think gets me there. I wouldn't think uh, I wouldn't think about the inversion. So it's not a word character or a dot. Yeah, no. Or not a dot. Failed. Ooh, I think it really mushed them. Anything that's not a word character. Let me just do that. What does that give us? See, the problem is I can't. Oh, I guess I could actually do this, right? And echo what it's doing. Surprised it didn't show me my thing first. Um, all right, back and out. Start with. Can we get back to green? No, we cannot get. Oh, wait, wait, that's right. Of course not. Hang on. Come back here. There. Okay, we're green. Why isn't it printing out the destination file before it chokes? Like it should always print out the first one, right? Seems like, oh, they keep doing this. Stop it. Oh, maybe 
Oh, it's completely eating it. That's what's happening. Match any non-word character. Wait, did that pass? Yeah, okay, that passed. Wait a minute. Okay, now it's printing out stuff and then it's dying. So, and it thinks it's a word character. But that's the whole point. I don't want to have to explicitly put that in. Said word characters. Echo, ABC, and blah, blah. Pipe that to said. Search for non-word. Replace with a dot. Global. Replace with a word. What just happened? Why is it only actually doing the W character? Maybe because I gotta put it in quotes. No, what is going on? I don't understand regular expressions anymore. All right, let's copy this line for line. See what happens. What? E interpret regular expressions as extended regular expressions rather than basic. All right, full for manual. Okay, so we're gonna do that. E command, append the editing commands to specific, append the editing commands specified by the command argument to the list of commands. Okay. Address, address, functions, arguments. Context address, any character other than a backslash or a new line, maybe delimited by a regular expression, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
any character other than a backslash in the line. Also, putting a backslash character before the delimiting character causes the character to be treated limitedly. For example, in the context of X, X, the right delimiter is an X. And the second X stands for itself. So the regular expression is that. The R and W functions Understand any of that? I didn't really look at it though. Matches any word character. This is equivalent to all num. I don't understand. I mean, it's making isn't that doing everything it's global I mean it's right there that being double quotes oh my god if it has to be in double quotes I'm gonna be I was, I was gonna be happy actually that's what I was gonna be said not working. What am I missing? Nope, didn't do nothing. Said Mac not working. Characters are variable the same as a delimiter. You should use S. Try using another delimiter instead. Max said reg X. E flag means to use extended regular expression. So you should just use dash E as on Linux. The said Mac OS is based on BSDs and doesn't have GU in extensions. Okay.
He also works in Union said it's an undocumented option. They added compliant with POSEX, whatever. Dash E. Is there something weird going on there? So B, X, go. Got it, okay. Slash W. Okay. Doesn't like slash or doesn't like interpret regular expressions based on modern regular expressions rather than basic regular expressions. RE format menu. Okay. Matches, matches, boundaries. Except it's totally not working. I don't understand. Yeah. The shot. This all changed. This looks sharp. I mean, I tried everything, right? Mac said extended regex not working. Of the E.
So I press fag that works nowhere. This is the same page I was just on. I like the look of this page too. This is sharp. I may steal this. See, I'm on a two-year-old version of, or two, it's about to be two versions old of whatever. Please note that the PSU set is different from Linux machines. You can install GNU said. Bring that to us. Okay, whatever. It just it doesn't work. I'm fine. Oh, why is that downvoted? I don't think said supports SW. It's not Perl after all. Maybe said R invocation. Check man said. Not really programming Q. Well, I was about to ask the same thing. Whatever. Leave page. <sighs> okay, well that helps explain some stuff. Maybe. There's such an easier way to do this, but it's good. I, I like the exercise. Actually, I should do... give those actual like text names or whatever. Possibly working here. There we go. So I'm going to get rid of those files. It's funny, that little music icon makes it look like it's actually playing right now.
So really what we want to watch, and this will actually, I think, clear stuff up, is anything alpha num. So is this still green? Whoops, that is the wrong file. Oh, did I just delete? Whoops. We're gonna want to put that back. Where's put back? In there, put back. Open, delete, empty. I don't want to delete it. Where's put back? Oh, I didn't do it through the finder, so it doesn't know where to go. I gotcha. Where's that dev? Snake case names. Delete, I just put it back. I have a D there. Also, why is that file there? That shouldn't be there. This car changes. Should have been there in the first place. All right, ignore MP3s. Okay, we're not actually new, doing new tests yet. So modified, cool. So run, you get to run. Failing. Why fail? Why fail? Just figure something out. Where's this one? Why am I not staying open? Come here. Run. I failed. Crap. Test file. Oh. Rough. So it's not alphanumeric or a dot. Replace it with an underscore. Crap. I need. Uh, yeah, I really should be clearing these out so I can see what's going on. Space after name. Let's take that out for a second and run this. Is everything else working? No. Okay. Well, nope. Anything that's not now, why is that?
freaking it out. What was it making? What's the last one that burned on? Space after name dot text. Space after name dot text. Space after name. Uh, so it did the underscore somehow. But why did that get affected by this? Oh, 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 because it's, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, got it. I think I got it. So we wanna do underscore star dot and dot underscore star. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Okay, cool. Worked. Okay, got it. So there we go. What's this going to do? It work. How about this one? It no work. Uh, it's because of this, though. Try now. No. Oh. What if we do, yeah, that's done with an underscore. What if we do this? Is that gonna break other things? Or an underscore. Those are the allow characters. Still failed. Still failed. All right, let's burn some of these so we can see what's going on. Test file one, so it's collapsing. that work because the dot's staying in there everything that's not a dot or is not a alpha or a dot or that oh, let's try it store need to be escaped uh, it's not up here so oh come on mm. such file directory. Okay, so that deleted everything. Oh, unbalanced brackets. Gotcha. Has it been giving me different messages? Why? <clears throat> I 
I made a little smiley. So that took the dot out. I understand what's happening. Is looking for spaces. So Anything that's not that, not not a dot or space. Collapse. I could add to get ignore here. Oh, that's kind of soxy. Soxy. There we go. That's where you do it, right? Add to get ignore. Just because sometimes that one gets hit. Okay, so it's collapsed down now. This is just order of operation stuff. So anything that's not a number, a dot, or a space gets collapsed. And then we go through So this is going to be spaces again. Passed. Sweet. I don't care about the order right now. Like I could, you could change it. Like that order doesn't, isn't the way that I would do it if I was going to define it straight, but like not a whole lot of sense and messing with it. Alright, let's see what this one does. Got it. Failed. Oh, that's because we didn't actually put anything in here for it to target to. I'm guessing it should be this. Intro, that, 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 that. If only there was some script that I could have that would make those magically happen for me. smart one would commit before one did this oh that's gonna be interesting l-a-t-a-s-h-a -A -A. i don't know how to do the a with the thing over it we're gonna let that go for a second i'm gonna bet it explodes because it's not the same
echo destination file. Oh, it actually is removing the accent. Which is kind of a bummer. Or maybe that A, maybe that accent only exists with capital A's. I wish I, like, I, I prefer it stay in there, but like, that's how the truncate command's doing it. So that's how the truncate command is doing it. I am not at the point of redoing truncate or translate. Whatever that command is. That all goes away. That goes away. This becomes that. Working. The, the here's one, yeah, with the What I meant to do was this. I meant to do this a minute ago. So we got a couple to play with. The good news is I can copy this and then undo back and then paste it. should go to just that. Okay, so here, yeah, so this will be interesting. Let's see. It should leave that alone. Nope. So that's all the commands. So now, yeah, the thing that I want to do is like do a pre-flight check to make sure that files don't already exist and that you're not going to clobber stuff by overwriting, um, etc. But I don't want to do that in Bash anymore. I, like I'm happy. I'm happy with this. This is as far as I'm doing this in Bash. Um,
Yep, okay, that's cool. I like this. This is fine. Um... Weird things in file. Wait, file names to test. For and out. Yeah, we're... All right, I'll be right back. And we're back. Um, that was a lot of work for not a lot of reward, but that's okay. Like that's, I wanted to go through that exercise to see what a bash thing would be like. And like it, well, so also now I've got the test suite that I want to run for 
when I write this for real in Python. Um, and I can do... And with Python, like, I've got a little bit different ways to do it, right? Because I can actually make it... Um, I can give it a class and I can make it a test and, and do all that stuff. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do right now. I think I do kind of want to finish that off. So um, I'll go write some blog posts tonight too. Just chill out and mess around. Um, Yeah, so that would actually work. Like, it's actually doing stuff. Um, but not the best way to do it. So let me cl let me get rid of all these things. Um, I think I just deleted it. No, there it is. I gotta figure out what I want to name this. Um, It's also one of the things, I'm sure there's something out there that does exactly what I'm doing and probably 10,000 times more. Um, but this is another one of the things where I like the exercise of going through it and figuring it out and it's good practice for a little a little thing. Um, and it's nice to have your own tool, right? Um, okay, so we're gonna move that into there. Or do you want to move Test Arena into there? Yes, please. So we can close that. Move that in there. Yes, please. Close that. So this doesn't need a config, but building view 
beautiful clam mine interfaces with Python. Basic CLI arguments. This is required parameter. Let's pass to the scripts. Options. Flags. Arg parse is the default Python module for creating command line programs. Provides all the features you need to build a simple CLI. Cool. Simple addition operation. Click with click, you can build CLIs. Easily compare to parse. Click solves. Click def main. Click echo. This is built click. Main main. Greeting. Yeah, but you got to do. Hmm. The trick is like, so it's, but you got to install a module to do that. Which I can install a module. That's where I go back and forth on this. Like, am I, ah, no, whatever, screw it. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do click. I like click, click looks cool. Or one of them. Click group main. Python back and create command line interfaces easily using POSIX style markdown use of instructions. File required doc strings formatted at the top of your file top element. Active command line interfaces. Like inquiry JS part inquiry is structured in useful context. You define a list of questions and pass them to a prompt. Prompt terms a list of answers. Some parts of the script. Results. Python module for converting strings and ASCII text with art fonts. Converting strings and ASCII text with art fonts. Well, that's cool. Uh, I'm trying to use Visual Code or Visual Studio, whatever, for a bit. Um, what I should do, let's try this. So let's close this. Let's close out Scratchpad here. We're going to open. We'll get scratch pad pie. Hmm. 
I think I am going to do... What was that one that was the dark one? Adam one dark? Nope. Is that it? Abyss? I want to go back to the Tron theme, even though it doesn't look as great on stream. There it is. High contrast. Oh, of course, it probably looks okay. I've just got the contrast knocked down on this machine. Yeah, but it looks all right. Oh yeah, that's fine. No, uh, I want to add a folder. I should be able to right click and do that. Once we can do this. Um, what's this thing called? From Figlet. From Pi Figlet. Did this fire up a virtual environment or no? Or do we know? Python, do you want to select it to start the features in the Python extension? Yes. Lint is not installed. I thought I installed that. Oh, okay. It is starting up the virtual environment. Okay, that's what it's doing. See, that's actually not that high contrast. I kind of want to play around with font colors now. Uh, import that. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Copy paste. Whoa, that was weird. That would be Python 2 code. <laughs> so what are the current version of it's based on from 2012. I love it. Font examples. Here we go. That's what we're looking for. So I'm guessing. Sweet. Uh, so now what we really want to do, right, is build the same thing and put it into really cool. Co 
cosmic. Holy cow, there's a bunch of these. My goodness. Alright. Pi. ASCII. Text. What's it called? Pi. F I G L E T. Oh, see, this is helpful. It doesn't have that line here this time. Wish that wasn't quite as close. We're just gonna mess around for a little bit, whatever. That's cool. All right. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, that isn't actually the Python thing, but we're going to keep it in there anyways for Python. Nope. my page. Give me our page. By Figlet, Clint. Supports colors. Custom nestable indentation context manager. Supports custom email style quotes. That was an awesome column printer. Cool, right? I know. Cement provides a lightweight and fully feature foundation to build anything from single file scripts to complex interactive dependent applications. Cliff. Frame uh, uses setup tools, entry points to provide subcommands. Performers, plaque. Which has complexity by using declare interface. Yeah. So part of me wants to try and write one in the default just to kind of go through the exercise. Description, add some integers. Parser, add arguments, integers. Metavar in, type int, in args plus, help, integer list. Let's perform simple addition.
args, args parts. So I don't need, arg parts is the default Python miner for creating command line programs. It provides all the features you need to build a simple CLI, right? So arg parse, argument parser description, add some integers, add argument, integers. This has been sticking out a little bit more than it should. He's right, user friendly command line interfaces. Prince. Args accumulate, args integers. So it does some stuff in there too, huh? It's got some logic. First up, I'm using args parse to create an argument parser object. Filling an argument parser with information about program arguments is done by add argument. Generally, these calls tell the argument parser how it takes the strings on the command line and turn them into objects. But I don't want. When run with the appropriate arguments, it prints either the sum or the max. Okay. Add argument integers. How do I just get... How to display the name of the program for help messages. This default is almost always desirable because it would have the message. I mean, you could just use args1 or whatever. We need to have help. folder to the root. But it won't let me get up there. See? Click it, how do you get up there? That's stupid. I gotta click on a file in the drive, like, that's really weird. Um, what is this called, arg parse? Oh, also it took it away. <sighs> Frustrating. And it put it there. Oh, come on.
It's gonna be folders all over the place by the time I'm done with this. God, that was an effort. Like it's right there. Whoops. Nope. Yeah. Sweet. is if I do this so if I come in here without a virtual environment does that work uh, toolkit scratch pad art parse yeah so it works okay Let's show the sort of functionality that we're going to explore in the introductory by taking and making use of the list command list list that list L what's that if you concept list command is useful yep concept is more relevant if we're on like CP this basically uses that first position is what's copied second position is where copied two. I'm trying to the program, yep. That's a snippet of help text, yeah, basics. We're just gonna copy this. Oh, yeah, can't really run it, whoops. Oh wait, when I ran that, did it jump to the did it jump directories? Yes, it did. Okay. Noted. That's cool. Script without any options results in nothing displayed to stand out, not so useful. The second one starts display usefulness of our parse module. We have done almost nothing, but we already have a nice help message. Help option, which can also be shortened to H, is the only option we get for free. There's no need to specify it. Specifying anything else returns an error. arguments Foo. add argument okay here's what's happening we've added the add argument method which is what we use to specify which command line options the program is willing to accept case I've named it echo so it's in line with its function but it's weird because it doesn't call it echo here the 
variable is some form of magic that arg parse performs for free. I no need to specify which variable that value is stored in. You also notice that its name matches the string argument given to the method. Its name matches the string argument given to the method. What? Variable is some form of magic that our parse performs for free. I no need to specify which variable the value is stored in. Got that. You'll also note that its name matches the string argument given to the method. Matches the string argument given to the method. I don't get that. We'll find that later. But however, although help display looks nice and all, really not as helpful as it can be, for example. We see got echo in the position argument, but we don't know what it does. Oh, 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 print args echo. I gotcha. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Or what they're talking about. weird though because it's not really I didn't really call it echo You'd name it like look at all the options for ls uh cp Help. Yes, yeah, so you want like source target or yeah. Um, source file target directory. All right, square, yes, yeah, so print arg square. Okay, so this drops it into a variable there. I got you. So really what I want to do is just, I'm going to get used to this in a minute. So parse arguments. So So we're going to print, is it our parse? Oh, args equals that. And then we've got args. So we're just echoing it back. Do what I was expecting. Oh, source file. There you go. Yeah. Positional arguments. Source file. 
optional arguments help display this help message show this help message I don't wish you could turn that off maybe you can So if I just run it, there you go. Matches for starter MP3. Okay, we'll have to figure out how to make it do that. through the tutorial. This thing goes well. It's because our part treats the options we give it as strings unless we tell it otherwise. Okay, so we give it an int. There you go. Introducing optional arguments. So far we played around. Let's look at how to do optional ones. Add argument. Is written so display something when that is specified and display nothing when not. Sure, the option is actually optional, there's no error when running without it. Note that by default, if the argument isn't used, the relevant variable blah 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 is given none. The above example accepts arbitrary integer values for verbosity, but for our simple program, only two values are useful true false. Let's smell that code. Store true, I guess. Okay, sure. Short options, yep. Combining positional and optional. I'm with you. Oh, wait a minute, is it that? Nope. So it does that but it doesn't like the stars yet. I don't understand where the processing is being. So it's not just sending that straight to the program. Oh, I guess it sends it as arguments. I'll bet you get the same thing. Oh, okay. I didn't really know this is how the command line worked. Yeah, okay. So you're not sending star dot you're not sending the pattern to it. Oh, here's how I, let's try this. Whoops, let's put in quotes. I'll bet that makes it a string and I'll bet that passes. Yep, okay. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. So it's passing strings, it's just, that could be the string.
Oh, that's going to be interesting. So how... Hmm. This is a solved problem, but I'm going to see if I can figure it out too. Let's also see if our expressor does it. It's another action count, count the number of occurrences of a specific optional argument. Rusty, Rusty, square, 16, square, what? Okay. It's all just a jumble. Like, they should put some spaces in there. Some of a flag. Some action store in previous. Lots of ways like, sort true. Let's fix. Powers, not just squares. Variant parser. Okay, okay, okay. Conflicting options. Add mutually exclusive group. Pass glob pattern to args parser parse python. So you could do it in quotes. If you wanted to stick with, if you want to stick with glob, I got up. args parser parser. Add argument sworth path, metadata type string. The path to files to be merged, in closing quotes, except stars. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Get a list of file names using arg parse. Oops, I just hit the wrong button. Path, what is this in args? arguments that should be consumed. Gotcha. Object usually associates a single command line argument with a single action taken. In args command keyword argument associates a different number of command line arguments with a single action. Supported values are in an integer. Question mark. One argument will be consumed by the command line if possible to produce a single item. If no command line argument is presented, the value from the default will be produced. All the command line arguments are presented together into a list. Note that it generally doesn't make much sense to have more than one positional argument with an arg star. Right. Because multiple options with an arg, but multiple optional arguments are possible. For example, yeah, because you could do, you could split them that way. This is what we want in args plus. So we want at least one thing coming in. If the args keyword argument is not provided, the number of arguments consumed is determined by the action. Generally, this means a single command line argument will be consumed and a single item on a list will be produced. Sweet. Hmm. 
There's so much stuff out there. <laughs> I just need to pick a module and just read through it and use it every day. Like a module a day. I'm doing a chapter a day, do a module a day. That'd be an interesting thing. Type file. Oh, yeah, look at that. Type. Simple strings, however, quite often the command line strings should be interpreted. Something a flutter int. Common built in types of functions are used directly as a type argument. It's the default keyword. Easy use of various types of files, arc processing argument, the factory file type, which takes all that jazz. For example, file type W can be used to create a writable file. Type call. Type can take any callable that takes a single string argument and returns the converted value. So, we're just going to call it source. So, right now, no matches for start on MP3. Okay, so it's it's trying to find it. There you go, text. And then so if we do here that, wah wah. Aha. There you go. So, all right, volumes, Trove 1, music, YouTube, 2019, star, dot, mp3. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Excuse me. That's really cool. Um, hmm. I'm trying to decide if I want to take a break now. This is just just got a little more exciting for me. Because the other thing I need to do is figure out like, because I think all you do right is you make it, you chimod it, and you put it in your path. Want to see the full length video right now for free? Echo Hello World. We can run it. Permission denied. Make it executable. Add the shebang. Right. Just go crazy. We actually change the shebang line to specify many different words of even node, right? Yeah, it's environment, right? Add it to your path. Echo your path. Ooh, that's a neat little command. In this case, you can move the script file into tilde bin, which is my path, and from there you can run it from anywhere, right? I like the idea of making your own bin. That's cool. 
I thought that's what I thought it was. Like it, it's just one of those I and I've done it before, like my import photo script does that, but like That's not a big like I don't know. Something's weird about that. Or just it hadn't really clicked. No, it kinda does. Um Custom general purpose utilities. First and likely latest category of scripts fall into general purpose helper scripts. For example, tat, script to automate creating or switching to tmux sessions based on the current directory's name. Then set up, set up script and upcase. All suspenders apps are generated by one. Then deploy. Some have been set up, the script automax deploying upcase, right. Get subcommands. So I'm gonna get workflows. Git will automatically look for executable scripts in your path that match the name. Oh, okay. That's cool, didn't know that. Custom bundler short commands. I forgot about bundler. Tips for building CIs, use proper exit codes. Okay. Zero means success. Yep. False and echo. Yeah, no. Yep. But false or script will exit with zero as so a status code and okay, success. But we can explicitly set it to one if we need failure. Okay, right. A bit more advanced. But since this often confuses new users, we want to cover how to work with error text. By default, all output is sent to standard out. In the event of an error, we often want to alert users by presenting them some sort of message. But we don't want to muck up the normal output of the script. Luckily, there's a second output stream known as standard error. And we can send any text to it. In bash, that would be done by redirecting to two, which is a generic way to reference standard error. So in Ruby, so here it puts. In some cases, we want to silence both outputs and errors. We can do this by redirecting standard at. We can run the script directly, allowing the error message to be displayed. Wait, what just happened? In some cases, we want to silence both the output and error messages. We can do this by redirecting standout and stand error. Given we have the following contents in our hello script file, puts an error. When we run the script, redirecting the output to there, but allowing the error message to be displayed. Got it. Similarly, we can combine standard error, staring at, and redirect both into a file. this all this is helpful we're gonna copy all that
Wait, where'd it go? That line just disappeared. What the hell? Sometimes that happens. It makes me not as happy. Cool. Makes me paranoid. Sweet. All right, maybe it's break time. I'm gonna play with this later though. This is cool. I didn't realize that's how stuff got passed. If you do like a star dot whatever. I mean, it's, it's still, I, I'm fairly certain it's just strings, right? Cause it's got, like it has no concept of like a file or whatever. It's just passing a string, but it explodes those strings out and sends them with some type of list. Uh, so, Find name star dot text go. Whoops, you gotta go to directory. Print zero, right? Print zero. Mushes all the space in between them. There's like a zero character there. Yeah, so that's just the string, and that's what Echo star dot text. That's what it's doing. Okay. Get my head around this a little bit more. I'm sure they're out there, but like I really kind of wish I'd had 20 years ago, like the Terminal 101 class. Um, fun fundamentals of Terminal. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna cut it for a little while. Uh, I'll be back later tonight and go there. I really do like this look. Like I wanna tweak it some, but it's just sharp. And it, so it also looks really good on this monitor. Like it, the the crispness of the of the black and white is really, is really good. Um, I wonder if it's actually all the way black and all the way white. I'm not sure, we'll test that. Anyways. Uh, that's it for now. We'll catch up with you later. See ya. It's time for food. Bye.